everybody. Welcome back to Hoffman Reproductions. Thank you once again for tuning in with us. Well, yet another video on the manufacture of homemade powder. Uh, we've been over this topic numerous times. I haven't made one for a while because I haven't had anything to update. Well, I might possibly have a lead that could bring us one step closer to Swiss powder as far as the cleanliness goes. Now we know that the alder buckthorn is what is used for charcoal and upon testing we've of course proven that that is indeed a very powerful black powder as far as the feet per second, uh, quick burning, all that, but we have not yet been able to achieve the cleanliness of Swiss powder. So initially when I made wasn't necessarily the discovery, it's right on Swiss black powder's website about what type of charcoal they use. I went back on there to see if possibly I might find a little tidbit of information that uh, could possibly help in the quest to make a cleaner burning black powder. I may or may not have found something. It's not a secret. It just led me to another source. And it is the fact that Swiss black powder states that they use a carbonizing kiln to create their charcoal. Now that's just a fancy word for a char tin that we all use to produce our charcoal, only that is the commercial model. So I pulled those up and they were kind of an interesting read. You can buy them. They're very, very expensive. I don't see myself purchasing one. But what I found and discovered is that there are several different phases that those machines uh, utilize to create charcoal. And it's kind of neat in the sense that they are sort of self-generating on the heat source. In other words, one stage is, um, of course, it makes the charcoal, but the heat source is generated from all the fumes and smoke, sort of like a gasifier, if you're familiar with that. They ignite and are in turn uh, turned into the heat or the combustion that produces the charcoal. But what I found interesting is the first phase of this machine. Now the first phase of this machine, the raw, well not raw, but seasoned and dried sections of wood go into it and it sort of implies a heater or a dehumidifier to pull all remaining moisture out of that wood. Now that is a step I have not really done nor seen anybody else do. Um, I usually will cut it season it and then just set about charring it. Now it works fine, but I thought, is it possible that because that wood still has a certain moisture content that it is charring more dirty? I don't know. Maybe yes, maybe no. So uh, thankfully, my father is a woodworker and generously loaned me his moisture meter. Now I took the moisture meter and took a piece of the buckthorn that I have here. Now this is cut and seasoned. It's been drying outside, but if I take these two little prongs, stick it in there and get a reading, I don't know if you can see that or not, but that says 20%. Now 20% is good for firewood, but for anything else, you would want the moisture to be significantly lower. For fine furniture, for gun stocks, you want to get that stuff down so it is more stable. And I thought, what if that is affecting how this wood is charring? So I took some of that same wood that I have here and stacked it up over my wood burner in my shop. You could do the same thing by placing this in the oven at a low temperature setting for a few hours and pull all the remaining moisture out, but I did it the old-fashioned way. And as a result, and this piece is going a little funny on me. I think I grabbed the wrong section of wood. But the stuff that I have over my stove, that reading's not going to be accurate, I grabbed the wrong piece, is down around 5%. So we pulled a huge amount of moisture out of that wood and in conjunction with a brand new char tin that I have here, this is clean. My old one had a lot of uh, creosote things in it. I thought maybe that's making this stuff uh, char dirty. Uh, I'm going to try charring the buckthorn using the wood that's been brought down from that high moisture content. And when I set about milling it, 
have also procured some stainless steel ball bearings to use. Um, we've shown that you know the unlined mills from Harbor Freight, that rubber breaks down, makes the powder more dirty. The lead media makes it more dirty, so I'm hoping that these are heavy enough that uh, they won't take so long to mill the powder like marbles. I tried marbles in the past, but they have some other issues associated with them. And I also cast some brass uh, 70 caliber round balls to throw in there, about a half dozen that I made myself. And just in case you wondered if the lead mixing media is making powder that is more dirty, um, I thought they were starting to look a little undersized. The lead media that I had in there, and I know exactly what size they were because I cast them from my round ball mold for my musket, they are 73 caliber. So I put my digital caliber on there and sure enough they had diminished down to about 70 caliber. So over time, if those things get beat up and worked around in there, a portion of that lead was in that powder and I think thus was creating powder that was more dirty. So with all those new things in place, I am planning to rechar and mix my gunpowder implementing some of these new finds. Uh, it may or may not make a huge difference, I don't know, that's going to be in the next video, but I'm going to set about uh, Go ahead and get the mill set up, run a batch, get a corn pressed, and uh, we'll head on down to the range and see what we get. So exciting find, could uh, be a discovery, we'll see. Thank you all so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.